Welcome back to this members only series on best practice for your Microsoft 365 business premium subscriptions. Now we've been through a few topics already in this series and the next one on our list is protect against malware and other cyber threats. Now in this we're going to look at applying or reviewing and applying preset security policies that are available to you already in your tenant for email and collaboration. We're gonna show you how to turn on Microsoft Defender for business, adjust sharing settings for SharePoint and OneDrive files and folders, and set up and review your alert policies. There are in fact three more. Let's just check those. We can also look at manage calendar sharing, create additional security policies for email and collaboration, if needed. We may not cover all this in the one video, we may split this, but let's see how far we get. There's plenty to get through, but we've got plenty of videos that we can do. So let's start with reviewing the preset security policies that we have. If we scroll down here, it tells us a bit more about them and what to expect. So our business premium Subscription includes some preset security policies that use recommended settings for anti-spam, anti-malware, and anti-phishing protection. By default, built-in protection is enabled. However, consider applying standard or strict protection for increased security. There's an important note here as well. Preset security policies are not the same thing as the security defaults. You'll remember that we talked about security defaults being enabled for new tenants as a more sledgehammer type approach, but you can disable those in favor of using conditional access. So typically you'll either be using security defaults or conditional access, then you'll add your security policies. Preset security policies simplify the process of adding your security policies, and you can also create optional custom security policies if needed. So what are these presets then? of security policies. They provide protection to your email and collaboration content. These policies consist of profiles which determine the level of protection, policies such as anti-spam, anti-malware, anti-phishing, spoof settings, impersonation, safe attachments, and safe links. Policy settings such as groups, users, or domains to receive the policies and any exceptions. And in this table, below it summarizes the levels of protection and the preset policy types so do familiarize yourself with those you can specify the users groups and domains that will receive the preset policies and you can define certain exceptions but you can't change these preset policies themselves if you want to use different settings for your security policies you can create your own custom policies to suit your organization's needs what is the policy order of priority? So, if users are assigned multiple policies, an order of priority is used to apply the policies, and the order of priority works as follows. Number one, strict protection receives the highest priority and overrides all other policies. Number two, standard protection. Number three, custom security policies. Number four, built-in protection receives the lowest priority and is overridden by strict protection, standard protection, and custom policies. So there we go. How do we assign those preset security policies to users? Before you do so, you're going to have to make sure that you have one of the following roles assigned to you uh, in your subscription. That's organization management or security administrator. So I've got both of these as part of global admin so i'm good there so what we need to do is we need to go to the microsoft defender portal to look at these policies there's a link to the portal there or there's a direct link to the preset security policies here and i've already got that open right here so i can show you that experience so i'll switch to that tab and we've got that open it's already opened this little flyout panel to give you an overview of what they are. You can actually watch a video about the preset security policies and just a bit more information there. Before you begin as well, some instructions there. It just shows you a few things on end user productivity, security impact, implementation and rollback. So make sure that you're comfortable with all that. But let's close those out. And here we can see what we've got. 
we have got three columns here of protections built in Microsoft Office 365 security applied to all users in your organization to protect against malicious links and attachments. So additional machine learning models, more aggressive destination evaluation, visual indication in the experience. There's a note here, built-in protection is enabled only for paid Defender for Office 365 tenants. We've got the ability to add exclusions to that built-in protection, which is not recommended. Let's see what that looks like though. We can go in and we can exclude users and groups and domains if we want to. So we could type the users, groups and domains we want to exclude. So very little we can do there. Standard protection, a baseline protection uh, profile that protects against spam, phishing and malware threats. And that consists of balanced actions for malicious content, balanced handling of bulk content, attachment and link protection with safe links and safe attachments. That standard protection is set to off at the moment, but we can slide that on and we can manage the protection settings. So let's have a look and see what we have the ability to do there. We're applying standard protection. So we can apply Exchange Online Protection to all recipients or specific recipients. So we can select all there. We can exclude certain recipients. Let's go next. Apply Defender for Office 365 Protection, which is going to give you things like safe attachments and safe links. And you can apply that protection to previously selected recipients, or you can be more specific. So we can do the same again there. And you can add exclusions. Impersonation protection identifies email messages with sender information that have been crafted to resemble legitimate senders. So in the next steps, we can specify the users or domains that will likely get impersonated. So if we go next, we're gonna get a, a little bit of a um, <clears throat> some sub bullet points there. Add email addresses to flag when impersonated by attackers. So these are gonna be the high profile users in your organization, your, your CEO level executives, the ones who are most likely to get targeted and let's be honest, the ones who are most likely to get fooled. So you would add those in there. I think I can probably continue without adding them in. Yeah, I don't have to. You can do the same with domains, add domains to flag when impersonated by attackers. And you can add trusted email addresses uh, and domains to not flag as impersonation here as well. So there we go. What we can do here is we can choose the policy mode. We can turn the policy on when it's finished or we can leave it turned off. So we have some choices there. So I'll leave that turned off just for this example. Go next and then it gives you a review of the settings that you've put in place and we can click on confirm to review and confirm those changes. So that's going to apply that standard protection but it's going to leave that policy turned off. So we click on done uh, and, it's, and it's leaving that turned off. So. Let's just go back in and manage those protection settings again. And we, we could go through and uh, and make it, uh, additional changes to those uh, if, if we wanted to. So, okay. And we've got a strict protection there as the final one. More aggressive protection profile for selected users, such as high value targets or priority users. More aggressive actions on malicious mail, tighter controls over bulk senders, and more aggressive machine learning. We can manage those protection settings there. Let's apply this one to specific recipients. Let's go in and uh, we'll pick on someone. Um, do you know what? I'm the only person in here, I think, with a... That's interesting. Why won't it recognize a user? Um, I don't know. But I digress. Let's just... Uh, I was going to pick one there. I don't know why it's not selecting a user. I am the only licensed user in this tenant. So I thought it would at least pick me up, but I'm not going to get too distracted with that. So we'll we'll apply that to all recipients. We'll defend it to, uh, to for Office 365 protection. We'll, we'll, we'll do the same. Uh, and, and it's the same wizard basically, isn't it? Except when we get to this impersonation protection here, we can add email addresses to flag when impersonated by attackers, internal or external email addresses, uh, custom domains, trusted senders, sim similar sort of thing. And then we can uh, review and, uh, and complete that. So those are those preset security policies. That, my friends, 
my lovely members I think is enough for now so we'll leave it there we'll continue with another video in the series very very soon I hope you're enjoying it do let me know what you think in the comments more M365 business premium goodness coming soon take care see you soon